Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman and this is the Vantage Point AI Market Outlook for the week of February the 1st, 2021. Now, to get started this week, we're going to begin again with that U.S. dollar index. Very, very important. Now, the dollar continuing to ride along the key v vantage point pivot levels, that coming in at 90.34. We're moving back and forth between the verified resistance zones. Now, we have three smaller zones that, have come, that are coming in just below this major one. Now, this will be the trigger for further dollar strength, in my respectful opinion. As again, if we can break these ser this series of uh, lower lows and, and lower highs, this is what we're looking to do. Now, the indicators from Vantage Point are certainly turning bullish here. We've got our predict short, medium, and long-term predicted differences above the zero line. Our neural index is green. Predicted MACD also looking good, but the position of the RSI is suggesting we have momentum. Now, Monday trading very often is a fake price. We get a big push, and then on Tuesday it does the exact opposite. So what you want to watch this coming Monday is to see if the dollar is actually quite weak on Monday. If it is, you can expect it to turn around on Tuesday. However, we could also... that goes the other way around that goes both ways here if the dollar is very strong on monday then it's likely to take a breather on tuesday and then recover on wednesday now again <clears throat> when we look at the intermarket correlations it's very very important here to to gauge dollar strength if i can use gold as a comparative analysis there is just no buyers they have no interest in buying gold i think a lot of the real money is going over into bitcoin Gold stalling out here, but that key level that I that I mentioned last week, 1904, the yearly opening price, we'll again put that back onto our charts here, but it's just not even testing that. We are unable to break through this vantage point, T-cross long, at 1865. This is proving to be very, very stiff resistance. Now, <clears throat> once again, we look at the medium term crossing the long term predicted difference to the downside, suggesting here that gold is getting ready for an, its next leg down. That would be more than likely we would see it move towards that low of 1804 this coming week. Now, we do have the unemployment re report coming out of the U.S. on Friday. I'm not too concerned with it, guys. And the reason I say that is because with so many businesses shut down because of COVID, the numbers aren't really accurate to begin with. So I'm not going to put any real emphasis on the on the payroll number. You're still going to see volatility, but it's just not it's not that big of it is is what it normally would be for me. So right now I'm looking at these intermarket correlations when we come back and cross reference that to the dollar. If we also look at the dollar a year ago, you can see that the dollar is predominantly strong going into around the end of February. Now, last year at this time, we had a lot of things going on with COVID. We had a big sell-off, then a recovery. But this basically, on March the 24th, started the longer-term decline of the dollar over the 2020 calendar year. I don't believe that's going to happen this year. I believe the dollar will, uh, or is very likely to, to recover some at least half of this lost ground that it had, putting the dollar index somewhere up around 95 uh, mid-year. That's what I would be looking for. But of course, we must clear this very stiff resistance at 91 to get any move like that started. Now, one of the other things we'll look at here too, using those, these intermarket correlations, is oil. Now, oil is stalling out here. Usually that inverse trade, uh, dollar up, oil down. So oil is really, really struggling up uh, at this particular level. Our neural index is down. It's showing we have momentum building to the downside on oil. This would uh, trigger longs on U.S. Canada. It would set off dollar buying probably right across the board here. So we want to keep a very, very close eye on that for next week. And of course, the one what all eyes are going to be on is the S&P 500. Now we unable again unable to break through here. But as I've stated many times, I am extremely cautious with shorts. It looks like the perfect setup, uh, all of these things, guys, but there is so much interference from the Fed with this S&P 500 that I just don't trust shorts. So for now, I think it would be reasonable to suggest that the equities are going to open up Sunday night very, very uh, bearish. 
But then I would look for a recovery by, you know, 11, 12 on Monday morning, you look for the equity markets to reverse. But I suspect the initial move on stock Sunday night in, in, in the Asian market is going to be uh, very weak, probably a very violent move down. But look for this level here on these verified zones down around 3633, assuming that we get down to that level, you know, within eight, nine, 10 hours after trading opening on Sunday night, then watch for it to pause down around this particular level. If we break under 36.33, then I would re respectfully submit, once again, we this is not a moving target, guys. We can see where that is. Having limit orders just below that, that may be a very viable option on shorts, but I suspect we will hold within the overall range. But the signals here from vantage point, again, very accurate. When we look at this, the, the I, I pointed this out to my own direct clients and I mentioned that way back here on January the 11th, we hit on the S&P 500 about 38.26. And to be perfectly honest, we've really done nothing since except wander around here. Now, the medium term crossing the long term predicted difference, one of the most powerful contrarian indicators that, that I have personally ever seen was warning me not to buy this since that particular date. We've gone through almost the entire month of January and there's been some very good intraday rallies here. But overall, since January the 8th, they've been forecasting that this is getting ready to turn lower. Now that signal is starting to progress here now. If we click on our F8 in our vantage point software, we can, we can assess that Basically, the second we crossed below this blue line here, we started this started to gain momentum. The at that time, the R, predicted RSI broke below the 40 level, where most people are using the RSI, stochastic, MACDs, accumulation distribution, what have you, as overbought or oversold. In actual fact, it's an excellent momentum-based indicator. So we look for that momentum to build to the downside, and sure enough, we got it. Uh, so the break of that blue line line the market closing below that below that blue line the next day the next two days after that thursday and friday we've come back up hit the predicted moving average to the number only to, to have a, a significant sell-off all the while getting that warning sign at the beginning of january that these equities are not strong so we would look for further losses on equities just be very very cautious when you you get into monday monday trading by midday now, when we go back up here and we look at, uh, again, the all-important Bitcoin, uh, I've, I've talked about this with, uh, again, in the live, Vantage Point Live training room with my own direct clients. I've been a very, very strong advocate for buying Bitcoin. Now, the yearly opening price in Bitcoin, I'm pegging it just slightly under 29,000. We can see we're getting very good buying. Anytime we come down around the 30,000 mark, and they really went after it on Friday. Uh, and that, that was interesting on just a little bit of dollar weakness. Now, again, what does concern me a bit with Bitcoin is remember what it's trading against here, against the U.S. dollar. So if we are expecting more U.S. dollar strength in the, in the month of February, then Bitcoin is unlikely to break above that that 40,000 41,000 mark our, our most recent high almost 42,000 actually so i anticipate that bitcoin will remain within the overall trading range between the 41,000 mark and then down right around this 28,000 mark 29,000 mark so we'll continue to monitor that <clears throat> but the the indicators from the vantage point are again warning that this thing is getting ready to move yet again so the predicted difference is rising our predicted RSI at 61.6, which is technically a breakout point, or it's warning that we're going to get some strength here. So keep an eye on that. We've closed above the T cross long. So everything here looks quite good for Bitcoin to continue to advance within the overall current range. Now, with the Euro US pair, once again, I have not been a, an advocate for longs on this pair. Now, if we are to buy this, the verified zones have proven to be a very good place to do that. The lower end at 120.59, we've come down and tested this level multiple times, but we've come out of there each and every time. What we want to take notice here is that when we come back up, we're getting all tangled up around the vantage point T cross long in these predicted moving averages. They're, un, they're not allowing the market 
market to penetrate through there. I can see another yet another sell signal starting to form. Even though the, the euro is rising on Thursday and on Friday, we can see that the vantage point medium term crossing the long term predicted difference in the neural index, despite them being up days, is warning us that this is basically we're we're range trading with a very with a very slight bias to the downside. Now, one of the key factors you want to watch when trading the euro is watch gold very, very closely. That is why I've refused to put out long trades to my own direct clients this month because of those gold contracts and that basically a 95% correlation to the euro. So if the euro is not, if gold's not going higher, long story short here, guys, uh, gold doesn't go higher, neither does the euro. So we're still within the overall range but i believe that uh again that this one 122 level is likely to hold going into next week when we look at the pound dollar once again the pound dollar you can see it's it's moving up and it's moving up in a, in a very orderly manner here you can see it's almost like a set of steps walking up a set of steps these are the kind of trades we like we don't like trades that go by way of the elevator so to speak where they they go flying up and flying down really quickly this has been a very moderate move here but it's been a, a very consistent move here ever since vp has called this long trade back here in in november my concern at this particular time is the virus is is going after the UK. Uh, they're having problems there. There's still some unresolved issues with Brexit, trade stuff. Uh, so uh, the other main thing that concerns me is this signal right here, this pink line over this blue line, the medium term crossing the long term predicted difference. This is just like the S&P 500 here, guys. It's warning me to be very, very cautious with long trades up here because the medium term trend is weakening against the longer term uptrend. That's usually a signal that we're going to correct lower, which we have. We've come down and hit the VP T cross long two days in a row and we've bounced out of there. But it was a very shallow one on Friday. So again, watch out for longs up here i think a short trade is 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 imminent here now if when we look at the dollar yen going into in, into next week we still got a bullish signal my in my respectful opinion this is the the one you've got to keep your eyes out for this level up here at 10476 has proven to be very very stiff resistance if we can clear this, and you can see how sneaky this market is, we did we got above it, but we couldn't close above it. If we can close above this level, preferably two days in a row, that is going to open up the door back towards the 106 area. I, I think right now that that's a, a very, very likely outcome. When we look at the predicted differences, they're both pointing upwards. We've got a, uh, the predicted differences pointing upwards, excuse me with the neural index the predicted rsi breaking through that 60 level and you can see the market accelerating through that particular area now one of the areas too that you can assist is is put the blue line on by itself and you can see once the market cleared uh two days in a row closing above this blue line we had a very significant move off of that 10420 area. So again, using that predicted moving average as a pivot, a daily pivot level for a potential entry point is a fantastic way to do to use the software. So again, I would look for further gains, just be careful around the same thing, gold and equities. The yen is a very high correlation to gold. If gold is going down, the yen is weakening, which makes that dollar yen go higher. That's how this, this trade works, guys, using those intermarket correlations. So keep a close eye on these verified zones too. That's the final piece of this particular puzzle. Can we get above here and stay above here? I'm optimistic but that optimism remains guarded because the yen is such a volatile currency. Now, as we come into our three three main equity based currencies starting with the cad we have the unemployment numbers coming out of out of uh, canada on friday uh surprisingly canada's gdp wasn't too bad uh you know but canada's got a few problems here right now particularly well uh you know we've got a prime minister that's just uh, one scandal after another uh this is fact not fit fiction <laughs> every week it's something with this prime minister that that is some scandal 
bubble is forming. But Canada, uh, he's really messed up on the vaccine front. We're out of vaccines. Uh, we've got the COVID virus is running rampant here. So uh, in Ontario, where I am alone, over 2,000 cases per day, death rates going up. So uh, Johnson & Johnson, it's my understanding, we may have secured uh, some of the, of the new dose maybe next uh, in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have to see. But uh, the unemployment numbers, again, that are coming out out of uh, Canada on Friday, just remember that they're going to be like the U.S. numbers. They're going to be skewed a bit because, you know, we're in lockdown. Most of the cities in Canada right now are in a physical lockdown. So people aren't going to work. Uh, businesses are shut down. So, again, I'm not going to put a lot of weight on that Canadian unemployment report. I'm more interested in getting the, the vaccine issue uh, resolved, uh, you know, moving forward here, you know, and again, I think if we've got to be very, very cautious with these intermarket correlations too. What I mean by that specifically is if oil and equities turn, then again, the fundamentals aren't going to matter anyway. The intermarket correlations will take hold. If oil goes lower, it's going to take the Canadian dollar with it. And if the S&P 500 sells off, that will hurt the Canadian dollar also. Those, despite all the fundamentals that I've talked about inside of Canada, the grossly incompetent prime minister in Canada, meaning Trudeau, uh, then none of that matters. It only thing that matters right now to this Canadian dollar is that stocks recover and oil recovers. If those two things happen, the Canadian dollar will strengthen again and you will see the pair go lower. But if stocks and oil tank, the U.S. Canadian pair will move up very aggressive. Uh, Mid-year, I'm targeting the 134 area. I'm not sure that this is the turning point where we go higher, but there there are some technicals, some intermarket technicals, and certainly some fundamentals that could weaken the Canadian dollar at least in the near term. Now, almost everything I said is identical to the Aussie here, guys. So when we look at the Aussie. The thing we want to look at here is that it too, like the Canadian dollar, is under pressure because of the S&P 500. There is a correlation to oil and and the and the Aussie dollar, but you know right now, and I and I do want to just come back to the U.S. Canadian for one pair, for one minute here. Now down around this level right here, with your vantage point software, I would really recommend that you draw a line on here, which is the yearly opening price. I believe it's around 127.14. Uh, so that level on Monday and Tuesday of next week, you really want to watch that very closely. And you've got the vantage point T cross long at 127.43. So again, that yearly opening price is a big, big deal at this time of year. And, and the, the trigger, again, is going to be those uh, commodities and equities, the S&P more specifically. So right now we have a sell signal, a strong sell signal fo forming off of the Aussie. Now, this could reverse very quickly, excuse me, if we get stocks moving back to the upside. The Aussie will follow, but we did have a recovery a little bit there on Thursday in stocks, and but it, it came right into the T-cross long at 76.96, and the Aussie went down again. So we've got to be careful here, guys, with this particular pair. The Canadian, the U.S. Canadian, the Aussie U.S., the New Zealand U.S., a very, very similar trade. When we look at New Zealand right now, it's clinging uh, like a life preserver to this key vantage point level. We've got to monitor this area. We're between two verified zones, the verified resistance and verified support. So once again, when we're looking at this right now, we're saying we're probably going to, off the open, we're going to come into the lower end of 7096, but then we're going to see if stocks can turn around. So always remember, indicators are fun, but trading is very hard. So we've got to make sure we understand the driving factor of these three currencies, because I've seen these intermarket correlations. Uh, I've been using the Vantage Point software over 20 years now, and I've seen these correlations, but I've never seen the Aussie, the New Zealand, and the CAD so heavily correlated to the S&P. And in fact, most days when I've got my predictions from, from Vantage Point in the evening, when the trading bell goes off, I actually have the S&P 500 chart open up <laughs> to look at these, these pairs because it, it's a driving force here. But again, 
Um, this may decouple somewhat if if this if we can get this uh, COVID virus under control, which I'm hoping we can do here in Canada. I'm hoping we can do it globally. I think that Australia and I believe it was New Zealand that they had about a I think correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was around a five week lockdown, and they're doing pretty good right now. So that may be something that we may have to end up doing here in Canada. Also, it's very difficult to say at this time. So with that said, this is the Vantage Point AI Market Outlook for the week of February the 1st, 2021.